Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from azurautomation.com and welcome to another section of our course API testing with S Sharp and SpecFlow. And in this section, we're going to talk about snapshooters. It's a very small section where we're going to talk about snapshooter, a tool which will simplify you how you can test a complex response object. And I have been getting this question quite a long time from students like you asking how to really deal with those complex response objects. Then probably you can fix that issues in a very small cheeky manner which is like this tool like the snapshooter so snapshooter is a flexible dotnet testing tool which can be used to validate all your test results with one single assertion it creates simply a snapshot of your test result object and stores it on a file system if the test is executed again the test result will be compared with the stored snapshot and if the snapshot matches to the test result the test will be passed and the snapshooter is a flexible snapshotting tool to simplify the result validation on your unit testing in dotnet so it is based on the idea of just snapshotting testing so basically there is a tool called just if you have heard about it in java script language uh, this is very very famous where we do uh, a snapshot testing for the uh, ui models and stuff uh, for the react and vue.js uh, and that's exactly what we can do in the snapshooter as well but here we're going to be taking the response object to be verified and again, it, as you can see in, over here in this particular line, it says that it helps to simplify the result validation in your unit testing of .NET. And we are gonna be doing most like an end-to-end -end testing or API testing. Does it really fits us or help us to uh, really uh, fix the problem that we are facing? Well, in one sense it can, but in other sense it won't. For example, if you're gonna be testing the whole API, like each and every property, uh, if there is a big response object and if you think that you really really wanted to uh, test at uh, those scenarios then probably snapshot will be very very helpful instead of going through each and every property manually and verify that so again why snapshotter if that's the question you have got a typical snapshotting test case in dotnet is if you have a complex test result object with several properties to validate and all these properties should always be same then snapshot is for you so instead of writing multiple tests or multiple assertions for each property in your test, a snapshot can be created and stored alongside the executed test result. And now every time when the test is executed, the test result object will be compared with the stored snapshot file and the test will fail if the snapshot does not match. So that's how the snapshot really work. And that's how we are gonna be making use of the snapshotter. And once again, the snapshotter or snapshooter uh, is basically you you can use this especially if you're going to work with a complex response object and i have been getting this question how to really really handle those situation this is the answer that you'll be looking for so for example in our case that we have been dealing with in our uh, course so far we have a very very simple object something like this or a bit of complex response object something like this where you can see in the first case in the post we have only id title and author so it's very easy to validate these three property uh, you can deserialize it or just leave it as it is and then you can verify how it works. But if you have a bit complex response object like the uh, same thing but address is in um, like another array type and it has got some property then it's getting a bit complex. But in real time while we work in the companies then there are even more complex response type like this and validating them is a bit challenging and that's why as i told you if you're going to verify each and every properties of that and if you know that within your response some of these properties are not going to be changing and there are few dynamic properties like id for instance it's going to be always dynamic and it will change then you may need to just ignore those properties and verify only those properties that you are really concerned with so a simple snapshot match is going to look something like this. In this case, as you can see, it is going to create a, a snapshot for the first time. It doesn't really validate anything, just stores a snapshot in your, uh, in your project. And next time when the test executes, it is going to match based on the response and the snapshot that it has got. That's how it works. That's a simple snapshot match. But if your object is changing and if you really, really want to make a bit complex match where you really want to ignore uh, some of the uh, properties within your code like title for example you can use this uh, ignore field option where you can just tell that okay title if you see this particular uh, property within this particular uh, snapshot versus the response just ignore that or if you want to go 
even more deeper for example in our discord as you can see we have like a pin code in the address and if you really wanted to ignore that particular property then we could able to do something like this so you can see ignore the id which is dynamic and ignore the uh, address which has got a pin code within it so you can see that address is of zero which is because it's an array type so we could be able to go drill down and verify that and then ignore the particular property which is cool so this is how we could able to do the uh the snap shorter matching let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work so for that i'm gonna flip to my visual studio ide all right, as you can see, this is the Snapshooter uh, GitHub page where it has got the uh, details which I was just talking about. And there is this uh, home page of the Snapshooter where it has got the uh, details of how you could able to actually do. They have even given some examples like this big uh, and how you could able to do all those kind of stuff. So I'm really not gonna get into the details of how these things are gonna work, but rather we are gonna see within our project itself. So for that, I'm gonna open our Visual Studio, the last section of our uh, course. So I'm just gonna uh, open that within my machine over here and our uh, server is already up and running. Uh, this guy, as you can see over here, I was doing, uh, doing some trial and error within the server, so it's all good. So we could be able to see how the test is actually going to work for us. So uh, as you can imagine, uh, if we just run this uh, get post, uh, so if I just trying to open up this project over here, and if I try running this particular feature, uh, it is going to work because it is going to be an authentication, and then there is going to be a post operation, and then it is going to verify a super simple response. That's very, very simple, and we could be able to achieve this much, much easily uh, within our actual server. So you can see that uh, those things are going to uh, basically happen. So you can see that both those things are basically going to happen for us over here. So you can see post number six, post two, and post one. All those operations are happening, which is quite cool. But now we are going to do the snap shooter, which we just have. So for doing that, the first thing which I need to do is I need to go to the manage new get packages and then I need to browse and then search for snap shooter and search for that, this one. And you can see that we have a library for the end unit as well, uh, which is what I really require. So I'm going to install that okay accept that's it the project uh, has got the snap shooter at the moment so I'm just gonna close this one and I'm gonna go to the step definition of the get post over here where we are gonna do the assertion so you could see that all these days we have been doing assertions uh, something like this like every time we get the response uh, response object and then we get the key which is nothing but the author uh, and then the value, which is going to be the value which is like Kartik KK. So if a post has got like a Kartik in it, then it is going to show as that particular Kartik. Uh, if not, it is going to, uh, it's not going to show that particular Kartik for us, something like that, right? So that's how we, we were working all these days. So if you open um, the postman over here, uh, and if we just do a send, you can see that this is what the response is going to come up for us. So let's try running this test. Uh, we, we just ran this test and it was working fine, but that was without the uh, snap shooter. But now I'm gonna add the snap shooter uh, over here. So let me snap shoot or snapshot, I guess, like that. Control dot, and that's gonna bring the uh, namespace and let's open the snapshot. Uh, and then I'm gonna say snapshot dot you can see there is a match option. Um, so we don't really have to create an object for the example. Uh, and then on the match, we can uh, specify the current result that we are about to uh, uh, get, which is gonna be the response, right? So we are gonna basically validate the response that we have got, which is the response that we are getting in from the post request. Uh, and then uh, we are going to be creating a name for this particular snapshot. So for example, this is going to be for the posts. So I'm just going to create the name of the snapshot as posts, right? That's it. This is the only thing that we're going to be doing for creating a snapshot. So this not only creates a snapshot, uh, rather it also validates the snapshot uh, in later point of time. So if you try running the same test 
and second time then it's going to validate uh, so let's show this in action and i will tell you what i really mean so once i run this thing over here you could see that within the feature file just see this keep looking at this particular folder over here once the test executes you can see that there is a snapshots folder automatically coming in which is actually coming from the snapshots that we have created over here and if you just expand this snapshot you can see that there is a post snapshot over there uh, and then there is a mismatch as well over there and you will i will tell you why this mismatch is actually coming up uh, and this is because we are using the same name for all the tests. Uh, so if you just open up this particular folder uh, on the file explorer here, uh, and let's open this up in the VS code. So you can see that the post snap is created and it is basically a kind of a JSON structure it has got. So you can see that it has it has brought us all the different details that we uh, we have got within our code, which is not the right one that we are actually looking for. And there is also a mismatch because that's not correct as well, because you could see that there is a lot of details coming up. So how to really get around this problem? Because this is not what we are actually looking for, right? Like, why is this coming? Well, in order to fix this particular problem, all you need to do is just delete this particular thing uh, at the moment because we don't really require this. So let's go over here. Let's try deleting it. All good. Uh, and now, instead of the response, just the raw response, we can get the content of the response that we are looking for. And now if I try running this test once again, and this is obviously going to fail, which is all right. And now if I just going to go to the snap shooter uh, over here, and if I go to the post this time, you can see that it only has got the response. And the reason why it has been failing is because we have given the name over there and we are creating like three different types. Uh, we are running three tests basically. So it, the last test actually doesn't match with the first snapshot that it has created. Uh, and because we are giving the same name, for the same test over here, it is actually going to be failing. So instead of giving the name like posts, so if I just remove this and if I try running the test this time, it is going to create a dynamic name for all the tests that is going to be executed like posts. I think it's post like one. Um, you can see that it, it gets the feature name and then the test name and then it keeps creating all of them over here. So this is how it could able to create uh, the different responses that it is coming from the server, then it is automatically digesting it and creating a snapshot. So this is the first time snapshot. And now if I try running the same test once again, the test is obviously going to pass because we only are doing a get there, not any post so far, which is why this test is always going to pass. But what if I change the uh, the response of the second test. Probably if you just go to the second snapshot over here, the title is JSON server, the other is Karthi KK. And what if I change the title from JSON server to probably like snap shooter like that? And I do a post, oh, sorry, it should not be post. I'm sorry about that. We should be doing the post because we're gonna update that. So put from two, hit send. You can see that it has been updated to the snap shooter this time and now if i just try running all the tests this time you will see that immediately the test is going to fail in the second one at least because the snap shooter is actually the name not the actual thing so there is a mismatch folder over here and you can see that this test has got failed because uh, it is snap shooter uh, but the uh, but the actual snapshot has got the json server so we can know that there is something going wrong over here so this is how we can actually make use of the snap shooter to uh, see what's happening with this particular response object but the next question comes is how we can actually diagnose this problem or ignore some of the properties and how to work with the complex objects and stuff those things we'll be discussing in our next video